Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. This week we watched There Will Be Blood. Wait, I watched Rambo First Blood. <laughs> this will be think? confusing for you. Uh, <laughs> a 2007 drama film directed and written by Paul Thomas Anderson. I'm Dylan, and joining me as always are Ben, Zach, and Cam. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like 75% here. Uh, to kick things off and get everybody in the right mood, we're going to go to this week's cocktail, uh, The Black Gold. Uh, this is a, another original. I don't even know how I got here. I made this cocktail when we were going to do There Will Be Blood like four weeks ago. <laughs> so, Been drinking it ever since. It's the only thing So I'm the drinking. inspiration is uh, totally lost upon me, but um, oh, yeah, I, I wrote it down. Here we go. <laughs> it's a riff off a of gold rush. So it's uh, two ounces of rum, a half ounce of, I use Mr. Black coffee liqueur, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, half ounce of honey syrup, uh, which you could tailor back if you use Kahlua as your coffee liqueur, because Kahlua is a little sweeter. And then uh, two dashes of Angostura bitters, shake that up, and then pour over like a, a large rock. And uh, yeah, I I like it. I mean, obviously, because I made it, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, guys, Try this nasty cocktail I made. It's great. <laughs> you might. You've done that before. I'm just but, kidding. Uh, well, the hot dog water? <laughs> <laughs> the hot dog cocktail was sick. Yes, it also made me sick. <laughs> I love a hot dog. <laughs> what? Hey, Zach loves hot dogs. All right. Do you love hot dog water? <laughs> no, no, no. It just loves hot dogs. Right, but that's not what it was. It was hot dog like water. Like poodles. Poodles are his favorite dog. Just adding a oh, fact, guys. Oh, I see. Okay, so he likes... He wants to find fuckable dogs. That's <laughs> yes. where we're at. <laughs> he thinks maybe, just maybe, he might be able to make a new breed. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to say it, Zach. I don't think it was going to work like that. What was that movie? Gonna, what was that movie? Make a, it came out recently where the guy was like... Hybrid. I was this close to making a centaur hybrid. I don't know. Oh, it was Rick and Morty. It was an episode of uh, Rick and Morty this season. What episode was that? I, I, I think I caught up yesterday. The one with all the horses and the horse oh my extractor. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Such a stupid premise for that show. So funny. Which one was it? Which one was it where they joke about centaurs, Zach? The one with the horses. Oh yeah, that checks out. <laughs> I feel like anyone should have been able to fucking guess that if they've watched Listen, it. Listen, there's a lot of fucking centaurs in that episode. <laughs> I would akin the black gold uh, to, if you've ever had, um, like, coffee and lemonade, it kind of gets you the same uh, tastes on your tongue. Like, you get that, like, bitter and sour from, like, the, yeah. the lemonade and coffee. It's... I wasn't sure what to expect, and then I, I enjoyed it, and I was kind of shocked because I thought... Coffee plus lemon juice equals not fun. And it was okay. I would drink it again. And Dylan introduced me to coffee lemonade a couple weeks ago, and I've been drinking it a lot. Hmm. It's a, it's a clutch summer drink. Thanks. Shout out to Cultivate and Ypsilanti for introducing me to the coffee lemonade. I might have to give that a shot now. Check the show notes below. Make a black gold. Send us a picture. Tell us what you think. Uh, do I suck at making cocktails? Probably. Well, yes. we don't need people to write in for that. <laughs> we all know the answer. Use the links below. Uh, so I, I found Caskers, which does deliver to Michigan. So there'll be Drizzly or Caskers link, whichever one you want to use. Uh, if you're in Michigan and a loyal watcher of the pod. <laughs> I love know how we reference are. one person. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, pick up some bottles. Uh, we get a little kickback from that. And uh, you can make the cocktails along with us. And if you want to check out There Will Be Blood, it's available on Netflix uh, as of recording. So go watch it. There Will Be Blood, 2007 drama film, uh, written, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, based off the novel Oil by, uh, well, very loosely based off the novel Oil by Upton Sinclair. Uh, it stars Daniel Day-Lewis, Paul Dano. Those are like the two main those People? are the two big names, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are a couple other actors in there, but there's a lot of non-actors in there. Um, the His son was a non-actor. Really? Yeah, they just, like, 
I I didn't read the story too much because I didn't want to like bone any mm. trivia. Yeah. Um, but I think it was like uh, they did like a radio ad for like looking for actors because they they filmed in like West Texas, and uh, I think the guys was like a cop or something, and his son it, like ended up getting the part or something like somebody got pulled over for a parking ticket and they were like, Hey, we're looking for people. If you know anyone who's got like a, a boy, there's a dude in this movie. Um, I believe you pronounce it. Kieran Hines, maybe Hines. Um, mm-hmm. I kept looking at him throughout the movie. He plays like, uh, Daniel Plainview's like right hand guy for most of the movie. I'm like, who the yeah. hell is that? He was Aberforth Dumbledore and mm-hmm. Mance Raider from game of Thrones. Oh, okay. The king beyond um, the wall. Hmm. Spoilers for Game of Thrones? No one's watching it anymore. There Will Be Blood currently sits at an 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb. <laughs> okay, IMDb says, A story of family, religion, hatred, oil, and madness focusing on a turn-of-the-century prospector in the early days of the business. I mean, that's fine. I guess those are themes that happen in the movie. <laughs> yeah, well, it's hard to, like... Without any I think spoilers. It's hard, well, without any spoilers, but also this movie is... It's got a plot, but it's not, like... There isn't, like, a... It's it's like a telling of this dude's life, essentially. And yeah, so, it's almost like, like a biopic, in a sense. Of like, Yeah, and so I think it's hard to put a very succinct description on that, because it's, like, basically just follows this dude's life from when he's, like... I don't know, 30 until he like is old. So, which yeah. is weirdly similar to the last Paul Thomas Anderson movie we watched. Great movie, guys. Bo- Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights. Yeah. Boogie Nights. There Will Be Blood currently sits at number 145 on IMDb's top 250. It won two Oscars, best performance by an actor in a leading role for Daniel Day-Lewis, best achievement in cinematography, Robert Elswit. Uh, it was nominated for Best Motion Picture of the Year, uh, directing, writing, film editing, art direction, and sound editing. I had seen this film. Is this all your first times? You yeah. got it. Yep. What did you think? I feel like this is a, kind of a wild one, in a sense. This one, yeah, this one is interesting. I, I mean, my my immediate first impression is I really Daniel Day Lewis. Obviously, like I, I appreciate how. I didn't realize he was in this movie until I started watching it. And I just, like, I know this is, like, how method actors try to do it. But, like, the way he always, like, sinks into his roles where it's, like, I feel like when, like, Brad Pitt plays a character, you know, it's like, yeah, it's Brad Pitt, you know, or whatever. But, like, I feel like he kind of just, like, sinks into the person that he is in the movie and then it's just him like it's not daniel day lewis playing whatever character it's just like that character i feel like he doesn't care too much about the face per se like like he's cool with like putting whatever like prosthetics or like a big burly mustache and a hat and it's it's less about like the star power and it's more about the performance he puts on yeah like this is the third movie i've seen with him in it um i've seen this i've seen lincoln and i've seen phantom thread yeah and in all three of them, honestly, like he just like totally sinks back into the role of that he's playing on screen, and you kind of you, like for me, I totally forget that it's like actually him, and it's just like, you know, that character. Yeah, which uh, I think he's retired. Now. He is. He said Phantom he, uh, Threads yes. is his last movie. Yeah. I feel like he'll come back. I don't know. I feel like I think he'll if someone has a good if someone had something for him that he would read and really enjoy. I think he would do it again. But I don't think he's, I think he's going to do like a movie here and a movie there. I don't think he's going to steadily work on movies anymore. What takes him, I feel like, a long time. Because, I I mean, I I think most recently he's just been doing uh, like Paul Thomas Anderson movies. So he takes like a few years to just like get into character. Character, yeah. Um, We talked about how good Daniel Day-Lewis was. Can we talk about how good Paul Dano was in this movie? Oh, my God. Yeah, Yeah. crazy. like, for all of the things I feel like I've... Every time I've heard about this movie, I've just heard about, like, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis is phenomenal and, and that. And I'm watching this movie the entire time. Every time Paul Dano's on the screen, I'm like, this is just as good. Like, he plays the creepy, over-the-top 
Preacher so well. And just like the scenes where when he's in the church is one thing. But I think what what sold me on his performance so much more was the scene after uh after Plainview like beats him in the mud pit and mm-hmm. they're sitting at the dinner table and he's just like you're an oh, idiot. Oh, he goes at his dad. You're an idiot. You were sold a false bill and then he just lunges across the table and you're like holy this dude might actually just be fucking insane. Yeah, I mean I think yeah, well the, so I will say what initially confused me is the fact that Paul Dano played both Paul and Eli because when Paul when Eli walked up to him or when Daniel Day Lewis's character when they were when he was like quail hunting quote mm-hmm. like I was like oh that's you know they've already met before but this like guy knows, what's, knows what's up but he does not and that yeah that threw me for a loop because they had him play both characters so I was like what the hell okay well I um, think so I think Daniel Day Lewis's character also thinks that though because yes. he he kind of like yeah. gives him a look and he's like I'm Eli and he's like are you are they twins then then like, in the okay, movie is that twins. what it is yeah okay so uh again not to spoil zach's trivia thing but i looked it up because i was confused while i was watching it so i wanted to check and make sure like i wasn't missing something um they had another actor cast to play i believe it was to play eli paul dano was only supposed to play paul um and i guess the initial actor they hired was uh, and I don't know, but this is like what I what I heard, and I heard like he's contested it, is that Daniel Day Lewis was so intense on set that like he just could not he he couldn't hang, so uh, he dropped out of <laughs> he dropped dang, out of the dang. picture, and then they had Paul Dano play both parts, which I'm glad because I feel like the character of Eli was like done so well by Paul. Yeah. Like, oh, such a creep. And the manipulative answer. like I'm holy but at the same time like I'm trying to like Yeah, like, I think force you into all these situations like well, like when he goes in and he's like yeah, I know you're about to like start the well but like I'm going to bless it and you will mention me by name and you will do this and this and this and then he doesn't do it and Paul Dano is just like or Eli is just like so fucking pissed <laughs> that, that I, he like. I love the scene where uh, Plainview needs to get baptized in order to to make the pipeline, and he goes in, and Eli just fucking berates him, and is like, "Confess your sins," and he's like, "I am a sinner." And he goes, "What have you? Tell everyone. Tell everyone how you abandoned your son." And he's like, "I abandoned my son." No, 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 no. Say it louder. <laughs> he's just like. Basically making him just embarrass the hell out of himself because he knows he can. He knows that it's, if this pipeline's so important that he can basically make Plainview do what, whatever the hell he wants. Which comes back to bite him in the ass, but. In that scene, I was wondering, like, because Daniel Day-Lewis goes and says something to him, at like, after. I wonder what he says because Eli's, like, face just like shifts like you don't hear it but i feel like maybe he was just kind of like oh thanks because in the moment i i kind of felt like plain view is like i don't know because he's it's so he's so like against religion for most of the movie and then at that point he's like oh i gotta get baptized to do this and he kind of is like you kind of get a sense like maybe he's actually like feeling something there because he's like confessing all this stuff and doing it but then like at the very end you know he's like and now I got my pipeline. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then he goes and whispers something, and I was like, I wonder what he like what he says there. Because we don't hear it, but I feel like he says something like, oh, thanks, Eli, or something, just to like... You're fucking dead, like, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have yeah. you know I have over I like... 300 confirmed wells. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just say, with my bare hands. <laughs> I, think it's, I think he says something to him along the lines of like, I'll remember, like, I won't forget this or something along those lines that makes sense at the end of the movie. Daniel will remember this. Eli shows up and is like, (laughs) I need need the money. I need this. And Plainview's just like, no, no, no. Tell me me you're a liar and that there is no God. Well, I can't do that because that's a lie. No, no, no. Put your drink down. Stand up. Say it. 
and basically like makes him do what he had to do in the church. Yeah. Yeah. When he's just like, I like to think he told him like, I, I won't forget this. It's like, oh. so f- fucked. Cause he's like, he's like, I want a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. That's fine. And then I want my $5,000 with entrance. Yeah, no, I, I believe that. And then he gets up and says it and he's like, well, I've already sucked all that out. <laughs> it's already there all is, mine, bitch. There is no oil there. No, no, no there's oil it's there. drainage. No, it's already drained. No, it's it's there. No. Oh, you lost, bitch. Then we get the, I drink your milkshake. <laughs> you have a milkshake, and I have a milkshake, and I have a straw, and it reaches all the way over here. <laughs> to your milkshake. And I drink it up. I drink your milkshake. Stop bullying me. That scene is just fucking insane, because then he starts bowling he at kills him. him. Yeah, yeah I was, I'm just... <laughs> Chucking bowling balls at him. Yeah, that scene was unhinged. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I guess like you kind of are expecting something wild because he's fucking just a shooting range inside his like grand hall at his yeah. house. So. Yeah, he's like uh, Hunter S. Thompson or something. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I think this. Yeah, in general, I think this movie does a really good job of portraying the greed on both sides of the spectrum of like pure capitalist greed from daniel plainview and then pure religious greed from uh eli and it's interesting that it like the how they are two totally different characters but they're honestly not that different like from each other really yeah and it's the movie so it's a two and almost two hours and 40 minute movie it is very like methodical it's a very slow burn um like the first 15 minutes are all silent uh and then it's like we slowly start to learn a little bit about plain view how he got um hw his son and it like it's very like slow i'd say for like the first part and then once it starts to pick up pace you like really get into it like you once you meet like Paul and Eli, and it gets very like fucked for a better, <laughs> a better use of the word, I guess. <laughs> I think you made a great point of talking about the silence in this movie, and it's done multiple times throughout for just long stretches, and done so well. Where there's just me, there's no speaking, there's no like, just quiet music in the background, um, the use of that like just silence is done so well throughout the movie i mean just one like when they're trying to convey hg's like hearing loss and this and that but the scene where they're at the when they go to his house like right after he finishes the shooting range and it's just completely quiet and it's like the way that they use that to be like yeah he got everything he wanted and he's alone he's in this giant empty house there's nothing here the sad truth of selling out your entire everyone to make yourself rich. I wanted to know what he was doing when he was signing all those checks and like using the napkin to like blot the signature. I was I was so confused like what that was. It's got to be an old timey thing. Yeah, I, did, I like because he was like doing the entire checkbook. Part of me was like, is whoever his right hand man was at that point in time like manipulating him and being like, will we write checks to whoever, or is it just him like buying more land and he can just like get whatever he wants at that point that's a good question because i don't know i in my mind it was like him just paying for or just like cashing checks coming in from the oil he's getting all of this money people are sending him the checks for all this stuff and he's basically like endorsing it so that they can get put into the bank something i think uh maybe gets glossed over a bit is in the opening scene it's quiet and you're just watching plain view eventually find gold But in that, he falls down as well, breaks his leg. And then the next scene that you see is him back in town. After watching him, like, drag himself on his his hands and elbows. He would have had to have done that all the way back to town. Yeah. Before getting his leg in a cast to get paid. I think thinking back on it, it's like, wow, this dude was straight obsessed the entire time. 
Yep. Was he the person in near the beginning of the movie that the oil well fell on him? Is that the same no, person? No, that was that, that was person? HW's actual dad. Oh, okay. All right. So that's like that's like he he's in the well with the, that guy. Uh-huh. And and the uh, like Spike hits the other like HW's actual dad and then he he takes the baby as gotcha. like a like cuz he kind of explains that in the in the scene with the translator. And he's like, "Oh, like you're just a you're just an orphan." He's like, "I took you in because I needed I needed uh, like a son to like do all the business stuff." I with. needed a like, cute face to sell or to buy land. Yeah, so he kind of explains it that he just like stole him. Well, well, he didn't yeah. steal him, but like I he mean, just took took the orphan I son mean, and like. I think it's assumed that like the, um, like the mom was probably passed during child. I'm assuming what he tells people about HG's mom dying, like it's HW, you fucker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Where That's HW... about to break into War, War of the Worlds. <laughs> Where H... HG, HG Wells. HG Wells. <laughs> Where HW, or he's talking about how HW's mom like died during childbirth. I have a feeling that's what actually happened, and uh, so when the dad died, he just took HW and kind of adopted the. Uh, the story yeah like uh oh my god the i thought i like i so i saw this movie a couple years ago and when the guy shows up and he's like oh i'm your brother and i was like i was like something happens here (laughs) and i swear and like it kept going and they were like friends and stuff like that i'm like dude i swear he like offs him at some point i was like i was like i i faintly remember this and then it like he's like like when he's like, oh, we're gonna go to what does he say? We're gonna go to like the the flamingo house or something, and the, like he doesn't respond, and like Daniel's like laughing, and he's like, that was a great joke. Like why why aren't you laughing? You know, and it's like then you just see him like turn and like his brother in quotations is like laughing with the like hookers, and he's like, I need somebody, I need somebody, and Daniel's just fucking looking pissed as hell. <laughs> I yeah. know what you are. I know who you it's are like, now. You're not my brother. Do I even have a brother? Do I have a brother? One man claimed to be. Which, like, a man. Like, can you imagine, like, how the world worked before we had, like, identification and. Right. You could just be <laughs> like, some other dude. like, you're just like, yeah, you're just like, hey, I'm your brother, man. Uh, we shared the dad. We went in the same town. It's like. I mean, you pretty much got away with crimes as long as no one else was there to witness it. Yeah, like, who is to stop uh, you? If you owe like a somebody like a big loan, you just wander into the next town. And you're like, yeah, my name's Daniel Plainview. Um, <laughs> uh, please help give me money. I don't know. Well, that's why they had like bounty hunters and stuff, you know. And I mean, he kills that mustache, guy. Cut and your hair. Bandy's like, I know your sins, and like hands him the gun, and he's like, just how do you know? Pissed again. But how does he know? Did he find a body? Like I don't. I well, I don't think he found a, I don't think he found the body, but like, he had the gun, and I feel like he saw like maybe the freshly tilled dirt or something. Oh, maybe, yeah. Or maybe like he was like, because he found them, so I'm wondering maybe he he also like saw them or something, and like, or he saw the equipment and knew they were two guys instead of just one. I don't, I don't know, but it, it's kind of I don't know. I feel like it's kind of hinted at that, but maybe I'm like reading too deeply into like that conversation. No, I think it's it's. I mean, I think that's the implication is he knows that he that. knows what happened. But how, though? I don't know. I mean, that's the he, question. I don't know. He's a man who lives in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's possible he literally watched it happen. Also, back yeah. then, remember, we're not too far removed away from witches, where you could just oh my god call somebody a witch, and then they would be dead. You find a guy I mean, out, we in, were, out in the woods. We were pretty shit. far from witches. No, <laughs> it was like two hundred years. Okay. No, it was but more we're, than We're also 200 years from this, so, like... Not that far away. <laughs> oh my wait, God. wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. We are not more than 200 years from the events of this movie. We are, like, 100 okay, years sorry. away from it the start, Yeah, it starts at, like, what, 1890s? Yeah. See, the, the middle of the movie like takes... Like, 130? The, the main majority of the movie takes place in 1911. Okay, so... All right, we're 110 years away. Say, so we're, we're closer to this than they, they are to witches, driving, I guess. I would say and they, they were driving cars, so I know for a look, fact that it wasn't that. And the witch trials were what, 15 or 1600, something like that? 1693. No, Ooh, I don't know. We're actually very close. 
<laughs> All I'm saying is, I don't think you actually have to Daniel have Daniel Plainview for is a witch, confirmed. I think you can just, this was still a time where you can just accuse people of something, and as long as you're louder, <laughs> they might die. I mean, that's true, yeah. They didn't really have the whole burden of proof thing. And like I said, you can get away with anything as long as no one sees you do it. So That's yeah. what I learned from video games. I don't Stealth like Archer, the fact man. that you're so confident that that's a thing that you can do, Cameron. Well, I'm not saying that's so not like, true like, now. Like, so can like, you, can, you can get away with anything if no one sees it. I'm like, mm, it's kind of <laughs> weird to me that you're the way you said it like that. Yeah, white collar crime is a victimless crime, so... <laughs> Identity theft is not a joke, Cameron. Millions of people suffer every year. <laughs> not back then, though. I mean, back then, it's just like, okay, if nobody saw you do it at the time you did it, what, pr- like, you either had to basically, yeah, there's like no, there's no way for people to know, like, you know, that you actually did it. There's no evidence. No, you just go to well, church the next day, and when people are like, he killed someone, he can't. He went to church. He's a man of God. He wouldn't kill people. Which is weird. Did you know how people still get away with things today? <laughs> I was gonna say, did you know that the murder solve solved murder rate in twenty nineteen is only sixty nine percent? So you got a decent wow. shot if you wanted off. Somebody. You have a thirty one percent chance today of getting away with murder, and that's just murder. That's not even including like petty crimes, like theft or you know any of that. You know, like yeah. they put the actual detectives on. I know, but, like, the big thing with theft is you gotta, like, keep it small. You know, take a Reese's cup from a gas station. Shots fired to the detectives. Or take somebody's entire rim from the parking lot at EMU. The (laughs) cops don't care about that. It was a hubcap. (laughs) (laughs) It was not just a hubcap. It was the whole rim. And it was at a McDonald's. You shut your mouth. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, uh, we're talking about two separate incidents here. (laughs) We're talking about two different things. Okay. I had my <laughs> I had my tire and rim stolen from the parking lot of EMU and nobody oh, cared. Okay. You yep, your, we're like, talking the about entire two tire? Things. Yeah, they took it off. They took off the entire tire and replaced it with a smaller broken tire and rim and just thought no one would notice. I, and, well, um, I'm sure they thought someone would notice, but they, clearly nobody else cared besides wow. me. It's funny. Did I your the same did your exact car have happen. like the special the special it didn't like at lock the time. that? Oh, okay. Didn't at the time. Well, I mean, it wouldn't really make a difference if they also had, like, a Chevy Impala or whatever. They could just use that one and fucking unlock it. Well, the keys are different, but... uh, What? No, I think the, like, the lot, like, the the nuts, like, you know how, like, Mm. a, like... I have a Nissan. Right, it's a, lock a Nissan has like a special lug nut with like a like a yeah, unique it's a lock. thing. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think it's different between cars. You don't think so? I no, think I think so. every manufacturer oh, okay. has the same one. So like if I had a Nissan, I could go steal somebody oh. with a Nissan. Well, the other like thing is car. they also stripped my lug nuts to hell because they clearly used like a wrench or something to take Oh my off. fuck. <laughs> a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a it was a bunch of chodes. I don't know, but I had the same thing happen except mine was done by a Chevy dealer in Southgate. Oh, God. <laughs> they put the wrong wheel on my car, and the wheel was cracked. Oh, my God. Yeah. Found out going down the freeway at, like, 65 miles an hour. Like, why does my back left wheel feel real wobbly? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Stop, looked at him like, oh, there's a big crack down the middle, so good thing that didn't go. Otherwise, I might have died. <clears throat> oh, my God. What a shame. What a shame that it didn't. <laughs> hey, I was, Michigan, I was driving down the road and uh there's an 18 wheeler in front of me and their uh like one of their wheels popped mm. and the shit like flew at my windshield and i like had to duck out of the way i was like i thought my life was over man <laughs> i thought my windshield was fucking gone and it just like bounced off and went over but i was like fuck dude. and the guy just kept driving he didn't even notice I remember He's got seeing, 17 other wheels. <laughs> I remember seeing an episode of A Thousand Ways to Die, and it was that same situation, but the guy was on a motorcycle, took his head clean off. Oh, oh my god. god, what? Yeah, his head a was A Thousand Ways to Die is fake, though. Decapitated? We had a funeral for a bird. It was a whole weird thing. <laughs> Pretty sure none of that happened. Here's a little more into the uh, into the thing. So... Dylan Frazier, who plays H.W., his mother, Regina, was a traffic cop who pulled over the film's casting director for speeding. 
got chatting to her and suggested her son for the role of HW. So that's the the actual story there. All right. Can you not take it me and I'll put your son in a movie? <laughs> that's like the only movie he's been in. And uh, his IMDb picture is, picture is like him now in front of like a Prada store in the middle of nowhere. What the hell? Okay, hold on. I have to look at this IMDb picture now. Oh, yeah. It oh, is my God. Just that's like... so weird. <laughs> yeah, it's just him in front of a Prada store pointing. But it looks like it's point. like, is Marfa, Texas a place? Because it's like Prada Marfa. And yeah. it also looks like it's in the middle of fucking nowhere, so it's got to be. Yeah, I like yeah, how he's got one acting is. credit, and it was this movie. Oh, here we go. Marfa, Texas Prada Store. The Prada Store in West Texas that is never open. What? <laughs> While researching things... Is this like a negative review, or... No, this is like a... It's like a... Oh, what is that? What is that website? Uh, Atlas Obscura or something? I think it's like one of those things. Um, over the years, Marfa has become a mecca for art enthusiasts, collectors, and pop culture devotees alike, and the Prada Marfa has been captured in thousands of Instagram posts. Even Beyonce has visited the Pop Ar- Architectural Land Art Project. Prada Marfa was created by Scandinavian artists. Da, 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 da. Prada handpicked the merchandise for the store's interior and provided permission for them to use the Prada logo. It's just a sculpture. It's just a fake Prada store in the middle of nowhere in Texas. Cool. <laughs> wow. That sounds That's, like Texas. That sounds awful. Yeah. Marfa. Marfa, what you say, you ask? Why'd you say that at name? One, <laughs> at one point, the de- the Texas Department of Transportation considered it to be illegal advertising. A billboard that didn't fit permitted specifications. To avoid removal in 2014, the structure was reclassified as a museum. With this as its only exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we gotta go to this museum. I don't think so. No. Um, the other scenes that get me is like the that are memorable is like just the freaking shit in the church. Yeah. Just because it's <sighs> so like I I don't know like he's a mo- growing he's up a past growing up Joel Osteen or whatever. growing up and going to different like well going to church like my church was just so much different than that then that shit just still seems so weird oh, to me. Dude. That's like, like the, that's like fucking well, Sandrock, Alabama, like <laughs> yes. snake preacher shit, yep. man. Yeah, yeah. Smacking he's one of the people, at, like... smacking people around, and just grabbing air and throwing it out the door. It's like, oh, yeah. you can't walk. Come up here, I'll heal you. No. Yeah. Oh, stick your arthritis. stick your hand in this box of snakes. God won't let you get hurt. Yeah. You have arthritis. All right, give me your hands. I'm gonna put them all over my face. Now you oh, go. Now come like, dance like, weirdly You're feeling a sinner. the lady. I'll get that devil out of you. <laughs> like he's oh. like he's like about to like suck that lady's like fingers. Oh, like yeah. oh you have arthritis. Yeah. He's like That's so creepy. I was like, <laughs> calm down, dude. What? Yeah, dude. Please bonk. stop. Please stop that. <laughs> Everyone here is now uncomfortable. Eli's going to horny jail. <laughs> bonk bonk. <laughs> You, you know we love saving the turts. You know Cam hates fucking paper straws. Paper straws song. Song? Uh. <laughs> I will say that paper straw technology has improved since I last shat on paper straws. I have used a couple since I've been able to go out more recently due oh, to yeah. being vaccinated. And That's what they were uh, doing the whole time while we were inside. They were just inventing better paper straws. I have seen also not paper straws, but it seems like they're compostable plastic straws or something. Like You're talking about the like ones that are made different. out of like agave or whatever? I have no idea what the composition of these straws are. I'm just... <laughs> but they are different. I'm not a straw expert. You but you're the expert, Dylan. But I do know a good glass straw when I see one. You know? Yes. I will say for those, for being at home and where you, you know, maybe you like straws in your fruity margaritas or you like straws to mix with your, you know, old fashions or whatever, you know, having these straws around the home is really nice. No, not constantly like throwing things away or you don't have to keep buying straws all the time. Like you just buy a couple and then you're good. And if you want cocktail picks or muddlers, they have that too. It, there's many colors. He's getting into like designs. So like the pride flag, he puts it on like the side of the straw. He's got hearts. He's got critters. It's like you get a piece of art 
along with a straw. A little multi-use. Uh, oh, yeah. He has critter straws, which have... There's I see a dolphin, a salamander. That salamander looks intricate. That is impressive. Grab some glass straws from Surfside Sips. Use promo code cocktails and classics spelled out for 20 percent off we get a little kickback from that and you get you get to save some money on some glass straws and they should last you a long time dishwasher safe they're pretty sturdy just don't uh drop them on the floor like me like a big idiot and you have to buy more <laughs> a little bit of a tradition around here um Hasn't been for like a week or so, but uh, Zach takes over, puts us through a trivia quiz. Zach, what do you got for us on There Will Be Blood? I studied up for this one. We talked about a lot of the stuff that happens in the movie, so we might have to go with a couple little deep cuts here. Uh, so the movie takes place over about 30 years, but doesn't include which of the following as a cutscene. A, 1898, B, 1902, or C, 1907. Hmm. What were the years again? 1898. That's about 200 years post which. <laughs> uh, 1902. Or 1907. All of those are about 200 years post which. <laughs> Is that how we're doing dates now? <laughs> 200 PW. Post which. PWE. Post which era. Um, I'm going to say 1907. I have, I have no idea. But. Sorry. Can you remind me what these dates, like what is the, what cutscenes are these for? Just, just like the, like title cards. Oh, like, okay. So which like date which one exist is in addressed movie? in the movie? Okay. I originally wrote the question. This movie takes place over thirty years, but doesn't include which of the following years. I, was like, <laughs> Hang on. I gotta find a different way to say that. <laughs> they skipped a year. They just time traveled forward. They skipped that year. Yeah, that was a bad one. That was the year of the witch. <laughs> God damn it! I was gonna <laughs> say that. I was gonna make that joke. <laughs> uh, what are the three it, years? But I was eighteen it. something, nineteen or something. I will, I will tell each of you individually. <laughs> Cameron, it's eighteen ninety eight, nineteen o two, nineteen o seven, nineteen o two. Final answer. In my, in my defense, uh, I like to write some of these things down so that, like you know, in the future, God forbid anything ever happens, I've got notebooks just full of Zach's trivia. If Ben miraculously the dies trivia, and though. none of us are available for comment, he's going to look like a madman jotting these things I have, down. I have binders of trivia. <laughs> binders full of trivia. You guys can get the access Mitt to Romney my Google Keep account questions. and find the unused questions. He has binders full of trivia waiting to pull them out at the right time to only to appeal it's to his It's just the used message. trivia, though. It's just the ones he already knows. Um, okay. I'm going to talk this one out because I remember when binders it. full of women used to be the weirdest thing a candidate did. <laughs> what a great time. <laughs> so we said the bulk of the movie takes place in 1911, which is about 211 years. Okay. Yep. PWE. I get it. Post which whatever. Um, we'd say HW's <clears throat> maybe like reign of terror started. You think every, Every movie Ben watches, he just, like, writes down notes. He does. He has to. Like, he's just watching movies for fun, and he's like, I have to write notes for this, because it might be a podcast episode later, so. <laughs> He'll go back and address it and be like, ah, uh, yes, okay, uh, uh, that's it. Hey, look, all right? I don't judge what you do in your free time. I don't <laughs> judge what I do in mine. <laughs> I'm going to say 1907. Well, boys movie starts in 1898 it ends in 1927 and we do see 1902 in the movie uh, and get right that most of it does take place in 1911 so 1907 is the fool All right. did anyone that's say that was fool. that dylan or no yeah ben and i oh okay nice uh, ben and ben and dylan all right boys um so every wednesday night during editing paul thomas anderson and the rest of the editing crew would only eat steak and what for dinner in order to keep in the mentality Milk. of Daniel Plainview? <laughs> A, 
<laughs> whiskey. B, vodka, or C, So not milkshake, what you're saying. <laughs> goat Dang. milk not steak, milk to be steak. specific. Go. Yes, goat Fight milk steak. Fight milk steak. <laughs> it's, a, it's goat milk. It's by bodyguards uh, for steak. bodyguards. It's the it's the goat of milk, the greatest of all time milk. It's goat milk. From goats. By goats for goats. So I'm trying to think. Uh, whiskey was not a popular drink among rich people back in the day. It was like poor people's drink. Uh, uh, I think, uh, if I remember I mean, correctly, it wasn't popular. For a while the the tough part is deciding well if they're trying to keep in like character to the time uh, this is gonna help you out but i don't think it's vodka because that would be much later yeah but it's that just deciding whether all the potatoes rum, yeah it's rum or rum, rum or whiskey, whiskey. i kind of want to say figure rum. Out because rum was the biggest yeah was the the biggest drink in america up until a certain point right and then it switched to whiskey so it's just whichever one yeah um, i want i personally think rum, it's rum i could see him doing whiskey though like it it, it fits with like it fits the, what we the, think like character. west and, yeah. yeah uh but i think i think rum is time accurate i believe yeah that's what i was thinking i'm gonna say rum i think i could easily see it being whiskey but i'm gonna say rum my guess is going to be whiskey because uh, Plainview literally drinks it in the fucking movie. He literally orders it at the bar. Oh, interesting. He says, I'll, I need two steaks, a water, a shot of whiskey, oh, and goat milk. Oh, my God. That was his order at the restaurant. Interesting. By the way, do you guys remember when um, he poured all that alcohol in his son's milk yeah. and made him drink it? We missed out on that scene. Awesome. Yeah, that was that was fucked. That Sick. was just to, like get him to pass out, right? So he could like go. Yeah, like I don't want to deal with you. Go pass I out. I mean, people used to do that. Just put a little alcohol in the drink and make him go to sleep. People put, put used to whiskey. do that. Put now, a little he like whiskey. he Maybe had the nipple much. on there though, yeah. so he was like trying to pour it down the nipple and then like dip it in there. I'm like, what does? What's? It's not well, gonna get much in there. Maybe that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> no, dude. If you're trying to pass out your kid, you you want to do. <laughs> At least two no, ounces. You just, what? You put, Let me tell you. you <laughs> oh, he gave it you out. Dip, you put a little hole in their like, binky or whatever. You put that in, and then you like squeeze it, let it fill up a little bit, and put then a hole in their mouth. put it in, and then they just slowly get inebriated. Because <laughs> their little bodies can't handle as much alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> just numbs the pain. Piece of shit livers. <laughs> They're more malleable, but goddamn, they can't handle their drink. <laughs> <laughs> did everybody say rum no ben said whiskey well 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 boys strike one for the good guys what? it was vodka hmm. boo yeah vodka and steak straight vodka weird boo. and steak because vodka is not what he would be drinking <laughs> it's definitely not time appropriate i don't think because i think vodka became really popular in like the 80s and 90s although maybe he wasn't going for that angle maybe he was like what's the worst liquor I can drink straight. Vodka. We just need to keep a constant buzz. <laughs> well, he, he probably was... I mean, the only reason I could see for vodka is, like, I think that that's the worst liquor to drink straight of the three. And so maybe that was his reasoning. He's like, I just want something terrible to really get that grizzle. All right. So we still have a tie between uh, Bill and <laughs> Bill. <laughs> keep that in. Keep that's, it in. That's your couple name. <laughs> We have a tie between Bill and <laughs> Ben and Dylan. Holy moly. I mean, Bill if people are shipping the pod, about... you know, Bill and's where it's at. Oh, my God. We were talking about Brad Pitt earlier. I got me thinking about Brangelina. Bill and Bill and, <laughs> Bill and loves camp. <laughs> uh, so I'll ask this to Cam and Bill and, Um Question number three. What is the body count in There Will Be Blood? How many people do we see die? A three, B four, or C five. There is that one really gruesome. Is it people where the that we pipe drops down and crushes that guy's head? Is it people that we actually see die, or people that we know that die? I mean, I know it's people you see die. I'm just trying to think. Who who do you know of that died, that you didn't see die? Well, Bandy dies. That we are told through Eli. 
but we don't oh, yeah. see it. I'm trying to think of. I know the number; it's at least, but I'm trying to think if like. Well, you know it's at least three because that's the fucking well, first option. <laughs> <laughs> he has a point <laughs> that's not what i meant the look right, on cameron's I, face which is like fuck you fuck you so much right now i'm pr- all right i'm gonna i'm gonna say four i have i'm pretty sure it's at least four there might be a fifth i'm, I'm trying four. to i'm trying to uh recall <laughs> to visually recall the scenes in my head i i also think it's four yeah, I'm trying to come up with the fifth one in my head for the life of me. I can't remember. So as soon as we've all said four, I'm going to count them off. There's H.W.'s dad. Yep. Yep. There's Eli. Yep. There's the other guy in the well that we see die. Yep. That they yep. pull out and, you know, go bury him. Because the well wasn't blessed. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> By witches. That's what, it, that's what it seems. That's what Eli says. But we know Eli is a son of a bitch. And then... Uh... The other one would be um, the guy the who shoots fake the brother. Yeah, the fake brother. Yeah, yeah. that's. The, I, can't I can't think, think, of, a think of a fifth unless one. somebody else dies. Maybe someone else dies in the well explosion, but I don't know. But I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody be. died in that. It's like I said, unless we're counting Bandy, but we don't really see him die. So I'm gonna say four. All right. So who, is there a fifth person? It's four. All right. Nice, <laughs> everyone. Yay, right. we did it. Billin and Cam on the board. So, uh, Billin is all tied up. Um, that means we get to do a tiebreaker. You boys are going to love this. We haven't done this in a while. Inflation, oh, inflation, in inflation. Time. Is it an inflation? It's a classic <laughs> meme. Plainview pays yep. Paul Sunday in 1882 <laughs> Series $100 gold certificates. If you were to try to purchase a single... One of those one hundred dollar gold certificates today. What would it cost you? I found them online for sale. Wow. Um, Wait. So is, is this like eighteen eighteen gold certificates? Hundred dollar gold certificate. Eighteen eighty two. Eighteen eighty two. Okay. So it's not. Is it how much the gold is actually worth, or is it how much the if, cert- if you wanted to buy one of those certificates? certificates oh. right so it's like a collectible. Yeah, you want to go online, you want one. So it's a is it so can you redeem it for a hundred dollars of gold or is it like a Yeah, it's a I mean it's probably worth more than a hundred dollars now. Well right. So I'm saying do you buy but it like, as a collector's item or do you buy it as a gold item? Yeah, you gotta buy it as like a okay. collector's okay. item. Okay. I would okay. okay. I thought it was more of a question of how much How much is the gold worth? Oh, it's not a question of like how much is gold worth okay. now, no. See, okay. that's what I was... Yeah. I went online, and I so found... So it's a collector's one. item. We're gonna yes. buy it it's a collector's item. Yes. Gotcha. Oh, you're going to buy it? You're going to buy it with our ad revenue off of this episode alone. If you get the... If All right, so if the that's the case, correct, I'm going to guess that the, the thing costs $80, because that's what we can afford. Well, first of all, <laughs> um, not villain. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, no, no. you don't get hey, to Hey, guess play what? I, guess I have this... I can say whatever I want, all right? I'm here. We gave him a platform. He has a podcast. I have a podcast. We play by bar trivia rules where please don't shout out the answers. Cam is going full Joe Rogan now. And uh, (laughs) he's going to start spouting off his right wing. All right, we're going to get Jamie Peterson on the pod, actually. uh, uh, We're going to get Peterson on the pod. Uh, Have you ever got, have you guys tried DMT? (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea, like, what to base this price off of <laughs> i have no clue because it's not even i, I don't even gold. fucking know what a hundred dollar gold certificate is <laughs> like i imagine it's it, it, so it's kind of like a check for like a hundred dollars like a money order or something for like a hundred dollars in gold uh, yeah i have no idea but it's not the value it's not the value of, of the what gold. it is the today the, the so it's just a collector's jesus okay um at the time it was the value well yeah obviously <laughs> <laughs> I I get what it, the purpose of it now I guess is. I don't know I'm gonna say like forty five hundred dollars. I I'm gonna go I I guess a hundred thousand I don't know. Like how many do you think actually are still in pieces today I don't I don't know hundred hundred thousand dollars. You can purchase an eighteen eighty two series one hundred dollar gold certificate for eighty dollars. For three thousand dollars. Oh, wow. okay. okay. Just to be, and also to clarify, Dylan, I did say forty five hundred. Oh, okay, okay. So I was actually pretty close. 
I thought you said forty five thousand. No, so that's why. I no, forty five thousand. <laughs> nope, forty five hundred. Hundred thousand dollars. And then you went way high, and I was like, it's a, <laughs> yeah. if it's a fucking novelty, and people are spending a hundred grand on it, there's a fucking problem. It was only a hundred years ago. Or... I mean, you should see what people sell bathwater for. Well, congrats, Ben. For I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Every time Zach asks an inflation question. I feel like I'm going to sound like a complete fucking idiot when I either guess something that's way <laughs> too high or way too low because I don't know anything about the percentage or shit on inflation. And I get Man, I get terrified hard. that I'm going to say something. You guys are going to be like, really? How fucking dumb are you? It's nowhere. <laughs> How much do you think money was worth back then? And I'm going to be like, I don't know. I'm the only one who has seen this. So I'll go last. But you guys, three three fresh reviews on There Will Be Blood. Cam. What'd you think? I'll keep it short and sweet. Movie's great. Daniel Day Lewis is great. Paul Dano's great. Probably this is I mean, I haven't seen every one of them, but this is probably Daniel Day Lewis's best performance. I mean, he did win the Oscar for best um leading actor in a role. Um this movie did not win best uh movie that year. That actually went to No Country for Old Men. Uh but it was pretty close competition, probably. So um, I'm going to give this one a nine. Thought it was a great movie through and through. I don't know if I'm rushing to watch it. Cause like, as Dylan said, it's kind of a slow burn. Um, but it was a really good movie. Uh, no country for old men also filmed in Marfa, Texas at the same time as this movie. Interesting. They filmed like the sets were right next to each other. That's, that's, that's my, that's my take. I think this movie is a little bit surprisingly a little underrated on IMDb. Honestly, there's a couple movies above it on the top 150 that are questionable. I had a really good time watching this movie. It's a slow burn, and I love that sort of thing. Like, The Shining is one of my favorite movies, and I think this is just, like, style-wise, it's The Shining without the horror aspect of it. Um, it's a great story of, like, greed versus greed, uh, and I'll definitely watch it again. I'm going to give it a 9. Like I said, uh, I I had, not going into it, I've heard, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis's performance is amazing, and I, I will argue that Paul Dano deserves a lot of credit for for how he was in this movie, um, how just phenomenal he was. It's it's long. I will say that. I will preface that. It is long. It's worth it. Yeah, I, I think Paul Thomas Anderson does a great job, of, I say, as I've seen two of his movies. <laughs> but, like, the movie's just kind of about, like, kind of focusing on, like, just the story of a person. It doesn't need to be some major event you know boogie nights kind of follows dirt through just kind of his life like there's nothing you know it's not like we you know follow dirt through some like giant massive life event we just kind of follow him through everything and and daniel plainview is kind of the same way we meet him through you know starting as a silver miner and then starting these getting these wells drilled to the point that it makes him just one of the richest men and then we kind of see his life kind of collapse towards the end of it but the writing's phenomenal it's really well done yeah i think if you haven't seen this movie you definitely need to watch it um it's a master class in acting uh i gave it a nine sounds like it's nines all around going in i gave it an eight and um i was really torn between a 9 and a 10. But I think I'm going to stick with a 9. It is a fantastic movie. I I do think the length is a bit of a turnoff. And that honestly might be the only reason why it's not a 10. But it's so methodical. The the slow burn and just letting scenes breathe. The the like Ben said earlier, the use of silence and and just letting a character just completely steal a scene. I mean, hell, some of the, like, half the cast was, like, not actors. Like, I thought H.W., though he doesn't speak that much, I thought his character added a lot to the movie in the scene where, like, he loses his hearing and Daniel is, like, laying with him and he's, like, making that like like making those noises to try and like see if he can like hear his own voice and stuff i I thought he did excellent there and and maybe that's a child's ability to like 
you know, play and imagine. And it's also an ode, I think, to maybe Paul Thomas Anderson's ability to direct and, and really get the best out of people. Daniel Day-Lewis, fantastic. Like we said, he's lost in the character. I think he is Daniel Plainview in this movie and savage, I, I guess I would say. Like how he can just like turn on a dime and, and go from this like like kind of friendly businessman into like a cold blooded killer and like ruin your life. Um beautifully shot. Ball Dano, fantastic. Steals every scene he's in. Yeah, nine out of ten. Watch it. Uh, I think this is one that you should not miss uh, if you're watching them. Uh, it's available on Netflix. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram at Cocktails and Classic Pod. Send us your movie and drink recommendations. Try the Black Gold. Tell us if you like it. Kind of weird cocktail that we came up with. So tune in next week. We're going to watch The Pelican Brief with Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. And as always, watch responsibly.